It is 6 p.m. I'm going to get this raucous party started here. Um, we do have a quorum. We have a fifth board member online. We have a sixth. Hi, Katya. Um, so here we are. Uh, meeting purpose, ownership, linkage, and budget, policy, contracts, evaluations. We have a lot of purpose here tonight. Um, but we will start with public comment as is uh, our usual first step. Um, and we do have some public with us, fantastic. The board welcomes comments, but is not able to take any action on them other than to direct the public to the appropriate staff member or to the complaint procedure. Comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. Time may not be ceded to another speaker. Comments are to be addressed to me, the board chair, or the board as a whole not to any individual on the board, on the staff, or in the public. Please raise your hand and wait to speak until you are called on. Please identify yourself with your first and last name and your town of residence. Please refrain from restating comments that have already been shared. You can certainly ex express agreement with those comments, but then keep yours short. Order and decorum shall be observed by everyone. Shouting and profanity are prohibited. As the board chair, I will maintain the order and the quorum of the meeting. With that, I open uh, up the floor for public comment. Online, if you want to use your hand icon. And get another 15 seconds. Okay, seeing no hands, hearing no, excuse me, or ahems, I'm going to go ahead and move on. Um, first order of business is the VSBA, uh, the contract with the VSBA for their superintendent search services. Jackie, I see that you're here. Thank you for being here. Um, Anne, you brought up one small typo <laughs> um, on the first. You are just the, the queen of finding these, and I'm um, Well, at first I read right through it, and then I was like, wait a minute, it says his contract. What? <laughs> right, so, so it's on the second page, actually, mm -hmm. in uh, letter C. At the very end, it says, herein are not included in, I'm assuming it means this contract, not his contract. It's talking about the cost of meals, accommodations, and mileage. Let's see. Where are we looking? See, it's under fees and payment oh, schedule. So uh, actually, page sorry, page three. Got it. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I could have said line 107 herein are not included in this contract. So it is missing a T, so I'm going to go ahead and just acknowledge that. This won't um, change it, affect yeah. our ability to vote on it. There also um, was a second document that I did forward to the board having to do with um, travel and accommodation expenses if those arise. Did everyone receive that? Did I have to do that email? Oh, good mm -hmm. Lord. All right, um, then we, Jackie, will not be voting on that particular edition. Um, and this is on me, but we can vote on the contract and then I will send that addendum um, out to the board. Okay, that has to do with, um, uh, travel and, and uh, accommodation coverage, which of course is referred to in the contract that it is separate. So we're somewhat covered there. Yeah. Um, board members, any questions, concerns, comments on the contract as written? Now that we have that ever so important T. <laughs> no, it looks fine to me. Hi. And we can get started, right? Once. We approve I, this. I, you, we can approve okay. it, and I can sign it. Time, time is of the essence. Absolutely, as as Jackie will go into detail about how much time is of the essence. Um, so I will entertain a motion. 
to do with the contract? I will move to accept the contract uh, with Jackie Wilson to help the board uh, do its search process for the next superintendent of the OSSD district. And you need to include that I would be signing on behalf of the board? And, uh, and we will charge Hannah to sign on behalf of the board. Second. Moved by Ann, seconded by Sam. Further discussion? Oh, hi, Megan, you're there too online. Okay. All those in favor, please audibly and visually say aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 One, two, three. Great, thank you. Uh, opposed? Abstentions. The motion passes. And I'd like to thank Jackie and the VSBA for getting this together so quickly. Uh, okay, so let's get through uh, a few more things before um, we actually start talking about the process with Jackie. Um, the annual report to voters that um, Chelsea and Anne were working on with Ben, did you receive any edits from board members? Uh, not, not that I saw on there, but we okay. edited it together, and so this is what we came up with. Great. We were trying to just scrunch it down a little bit, because at one point it was I three know, it was, pages, it was, and we were like... Yeah, it was three pages, yeah. and so we got it down to two, but I did today just do a final read-through, and I crossed out some more stuff. I'll just give it to you, and you can see what you think. Also, uh, well, the whole board would need to look at it. Yeah, so maybe you we can just tell to. us what they are, and maybe we can all, and then. Um, well, are we going to write anything about the search for a superintendent? Oh, yes, we wanted to so ask I, the board if so I they think wanted something. We have like another it. round of editing, and then we'll vote on the final copy at the at the February meeting because I think that would be uh, uh, that might not time. be enough time for Ben that that's the problem so let me just say this there is mention of it in my director's report for the OSSD annual report oh, okay. um, so and it's language that Ben and that I was some together. confusion the confusion is between this and the letter to the community that we had wanted to get out that we put together with the subcommittee the um, I'm not outreach. No. Uh, ownership, linkage. ownership linkage to the community. He he's clear on the difference between the director's report for the OSSD annual report. Right, but that's what this was. No, because that one's just from me. This is for the town report. Right. From the board. And okay. then you put one in the town report too from you. No. So where is your director's report going? In the OSS. So we, we, we have an OSSD have booklet that um, it supplements and supports the, were you actually going to vote on it tonight at our annual thing? meeting? Oh, wait. You probably oh, have I a past have copy of it. And so I know the kids the annual report that it. goes to everybody, so, and then there's the school report, and your report is in the school report. Correct. Okay. okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, I think so. I hope so. It works. Okay. Oh, so, good. We're reporting. We're report. So, should we vote on this? Yeah. Can I just tell you my edits and then? Uh, yeah. Well, I'll tell the whole board because they you. they all have to agree. Not okay. Just in the me. first paragraph. It says greetings. It has been another busy year here at OSSD. And then I crossed out, and it is our privilege to share this report to the community with you, highlighting our activities, initiatives, and accomplishments. So it would read, greetings, it has been another busy year here at OSSD. We hope you will take a few minutes to read through this year's report to learn more about the good work that's going on in our district and in our five schools. So you just we already got rid of that copy, whole... So. Oh my God. Did you just get rid of that whole... Um... Wait, Hannah has a different copy in yeah. the packet. The copy in the packet is not what Chelsea is holding right now. Oh. Um, oh. hmm. 
So let's figure out what is the. <laughs> this is the one that we reason. edited together online. We edited that edited this together, and then Kyle had asked for a report of the subcommittees, which I think Ann sent you, mm -hmm. and then she sent you. And I updated. shared a link to this too. And this is. That is that. A hand up from Katya. Thank you, Katya. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So I I did look at the one um, on the drive, and that one didn't look like I, maybe I was looking at the wrong copy too. But also when I reviewed that one, there was some funky stuff on there. So I was wasn't sure if that was the final one either. I think this is where my distrust of Google Drive comes right. in rather than using attachments. It might be a copy of the oh, annual yeah. report because I think I sent out. So if you look on share or shared shared with me, that's the one we're looking at. So there was the original one, and then there was the one la at the last board meeting. The board asked asked me to share out the annual report or. That's what we were going to do was share it out. So when you go to your Google Drive and you click on shared with me, that should be this one that we're looking at now. You have to look under shared with me, though. I know. I, the Google thing is, and I keep on making copies of a copy. And then, but well, I think I didn't. I think that's what this is. It's in the shared with me. So let me ask you this. It, are the edits that you two made together um, substantive or more, you know, um, Getting punctuation, <laughs> grammar, uh, taking out, I don't know, extraneous words? Here, let me see which one you have. Because I think I don't have what's in the packet and what you're looking at right I'm, there. The, I'm looking at the one in the packet because that's the last one. Right. So I printed this off of the Google Drive and this is the one that I saw. I don't know. I I'm, how much time I'm looking at this shared with me one right now um, and that's where I had some questions on. So I don't know if that's a different copy then. But no, that's, the, the, that's the one. That's the one, I think. Does the second paragraph start with one of the phrases? Yes. Yes. Does the third start with one of our highest priorities? Yes. Yes. That is the one in the packet. Yeah. Yeah, this one is I know that's so one. This is Like, for instance, at the end of paragraph two, it just, um, like, that sentence doesn't actually. It, it's, it's not a sentence. Given it trails away. Yeah, there's no sentence. Yep. Oh, <clears throat> so we've, uh -oh. Got a, we've got a highlight at the outcomes of the community. And may and I contribute to paragraph two? It says there's eight pillars in our POG. There's actually seven, and there are seven listed. So if you could change the word eight to seven, that would be a, uh -oh. a good change. I don't know what happened. Because the first paragraph sounds right. <laughs> so may I oh, suggest? Because I think what we definitely know is that people are looking at different things and there's some more paring down to do. For sure. May I suggest that we call a special meeting? It can be fully remote in order to vote to approve a final copy because there's sure. no way that can happen tonight. Got it. Yeah. Um, so as with everything else on the agenda, time is of the essence. Um, so I will try to get that special meeting um, done. if. In the meantime, Anne or Chelsea, if you could send as an attachment in an email the one that you the want us final to look at. One. Not yep. a shared Google Doc. Yeah. Yeah. As yeah. as a, the one, as yeah. a, a an okay, attachment. Get to the right one. In may I suggest word form. People, if you're gonna take notes on them and suggest edits, please do so in a different color. Change your font color so so mm -hmm. it shows the difference between the two and send them back to these two. I you know it gets cumbersome, but I think that's the safest way to do this electronically. Okay. That's it. Okay. All right. So um, we can chat in. Okay. 
<laughs> Sorry about that. I thought I had gotten the one that, but now that I look at this, I'm like, uh, it's not. Yeah. No, and no apologies. Look, you know, these what, things clearly happen to us often. When do you think those last day, or when do we have to have this to bed for the final? I had, I had let him know that we would, we would be hopefully figuring it out and getting back to him. So what is Ben doing with it? He puts it in. Submit that. Yeah, it into does. the whole, the, the whole thing. Um, so while I have everyone here, could we do a really quick turnaround and call a special meeting for Friday evening? Oh. Terrible? No. Nope. Oh, good. Again, it can be fully remote or I can be somewhere. Yep. Yep. I fully can be remote. somewhere. So, Friday evening. Okay, we're all nodding. Sure. I'm going to say 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. Maybe earlier? I'm going to say 5 p.m. 5. Sold. Okay. Yeah. 5 p.m. this Friday. That means we have a very quick turnaround, guys, to make. Edit so tonight, if possible. I'm banking on us not being here until eleven. Um, and and or Chelsea, if you could make sure that you send us a copy to work on tomorrow. And, and then we uh, do we need to warn it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. So, so Kyle, you'll just do that. It's a special meeting, oh, so twenty four hours we'll do it. Yeah. So as long as it's before <clears throat> five o'clock tomorrow, that we warn. All right. Thanks, everyone, for flexibility and understanding, and um, for all of your work, you too, in yeah. It we have a we have one that's <laughs> <laughs> that is complete. Uh, we just gotta find it. I thought this was it, but obviously, I'll look tomorrow. No problem. We're gonna get it done. All right. Um, the budget informational meeting Thursday. The, this is you, right, then? Mm -hmm. Thursday the 29th at 6? Yeah, and that's related to the, the school annual meeting. There's like a 10-day time window that it needs to fall within. And Kyle did a really good job of just checking to make sure it wasn't conflicting with like any other town meetings or things that day. Well, it so, is an extra day we get in the year. Yeah. It's yeah, this year it's leap year. <laughs> so that's the day we're recommending. OK. Uh, is that something we need to approve? Okay, then I will um, entertain a motion to set that date for the budget information meeting. I make a motion that the budget information meeting is on the 29th, February 29th, at 6 p.m. Second. To, moved by Chelsea, seconded by Sam. Further discussion? All those in favor, audibly, visually. Aye. 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 One, two, three. Sorry Beautiful. Opposed? <laughs> Abstentions. Wonderful. Passes unanimously. Thank you, Kyle and Elaine. Um, the complaint procedure. Katya, did you, you've, you've uh, communicated with Pietro? Yeah. Um, I did email Pietro. Um, his recommendation was that we leave it as it is, as it currently stands, with the guidance being that the complainant first takes their complaint to the individual um, with whom they have the complaint, and then if that is not satisfactory, they can bring it to the board. Um, but yeah, his guidance was to keep the language as is currently. Okay, and not add any resources, nothing like that. Okay. No. Okay, well, we have already voted it in, so there being no changes, um, there's no need to vote again. No edits to approve. Thank you, Katya, for your work on that. Um, Chelsea, the evaluation yeah. process committee. Um, so we met a couple days ago, and I think, Anna, you have all the notes for that? Yes. Yes, so um, we met and finalized the um, evaluation form and the goals for Lane's evaluation for this year. Um, 
we had a little discussion as a committee and we agreed that using the VSBA evaluation service helped in setting the goals for the evaluation. In addition, we used um, the evaluation form that Lane had created for the administrators that he evaluates, and that was really helpful in just sort of organizing the goals and, and um, getting a focus to the goals. Um, there is still the issue that the VSBA process is different from the actual evaluation that our policies say we use for the, um, for the superintendent. Um, but um, in doing the, the evaluation, even using the, the so the reason it is in conflict is because our policies say we, we evaluate based on his meeting our ends and staying within the executive limitations, and that that's the sole information that we use. But the VSBA process has us use, in, a, in addition to that, um, a survey out to the superintendent's direct reports and a survey out to the board members, as well as a self-evaluation by the superintendent. However, most of the stuff that is looked at in that survey is all stuff that's in our EL, in our EL policies and in our ends. So um, anyway, that's something that we need to, that we need to look at, but it. But in terms of the evaluation that we put together, it it we're it, we're right in line with that. So it doesn't seem to be um, didn't seem to be a problem. Um, future work for the committee. Um, Chelsea's going to be leaving us, so we need a new member. Um, the way that we've set up the evaluation, there's a mid cycle follow-up, so the committee needs to get together um, with Lane and just sort of see how things are going. Um, in March. In March. That happens in March. Oh. Yep. Yeah. And then um, finish up the follow-up at the very end, um, at the end of Not the year. Not necessarily for the March meeting, but in March, maybe reporting in April right. or something. And the goals, just to reiterate what the goals were was um, looking at the ends and or looking at math science and ELA and the scores and then just finding the scores at the end of the year and seeing how they compare and then for the social studies um, the arts and life skills Lane is working with someone crystal yeah, she's our data, data person. In the who district. is looking to see who met proficiency for our student body in those areas as a starting point. And the comparison will be to see if there were more or less who also met the proficiency. But we don't have that data yet. We're still waiting. Um, and then in like sort of soft personal skills kind of area, we were looking at surveying the public or teachers or who was the survey with it was teachers uh, teachers and then parents um, parents big ones and, and students right um, but a lot of it, the basic two questions are uh, for the teachers you know other questions under but the basic questions being you know is is this a good place to work are you happy here and in terms of the parents you know do you feel that you know the educational services right. that are being provided to your kids are of value. Right. You know, so the two broad categories. So looking at that and then the other thing that was happening as part of improving that sort of relationship with the community was working with the public relations fund. Which and that is in full swing I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those are just the goals for our reminders that we take. I just want to say that I think it's important that we continue this process of doing a formal evaluation with the assistance of the VSBA just to have that um, sort of outside person facilitating it. I think it's an effective management tool and 
one that hasn't been super consistent, at least not in my time being on the board. So I hope that continues and the committee sticks with it. It's a lot of work, but I think it's beneficial. Are you two the only members? And uh, Sarah. And Sarah. And Sarah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, Sarah and Anne can certainly run the show going forward, but, you know, it helps to have a little more, another person to help lighten the sure. a little bit. Well, I, the reason I'm asking is because there will be a change. Yeah. Um, it, it, if we can make it through until those new board members are on, yeah. if it can still just remain the two of you so that everyone has an opportunity to mm -hmm. uh, consider if they want to join the committee, including the newest members. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. Thank you. Uh, ownership linkage plan committee update. I do not believe... We do not have an update. We have an update. Oh, right. And Heather, you were said you yes. were listed to to um, report out. I mean, with the exception of um, it, we we plan to resume work. We have hired a PR firm um, that has some really good ideas about promoting the um, our achievements of the district in connection with the POG um, and really promoting those pillars. Um, as things we're working on and working toward, but we have yet to hold that meeting. We need to meet again to talk about the plan the PR firm has put in front of us. Okay. Like, it has put in front of the district and how does the ownership linkage want to collaborate with that type of thing? Right, because yes. we'd be starting from, I'm on that committee. And yes. Yeah. Right. Um, so, no update. So, no update. Because but, right, but um, hopefully a plan to meet uh, that's Megan and Katya and myself, correct? So hopefully before the February meeting, we can we can plan we will plan a date. Okay. All right, here we are, Jackie. We made it here in 27 minutes. That might be a record for us to make it through that many agenda items. <laughs> Um, the search process, timeline, and committee charge, um, which board members is included in our packet, but you've had for a bit. So, um, Jackie, I'm going to hand it over to you, but we will most likely have questions. Do you want executive session for this? Or do you want I think we can start in public session. Jackie, isn't that what we talked about? Yeah. Absolutely. There's no, I mean, I think the only executive session um, item would be when you're talking about money because it's a contractual issue and so you're looking at that when you talk about the job posting and then you'll come out of that and vote on that publicly once you have the Great. All of this is public information. Okay, are you good? You ready for me? Yes. Okay. Um, so, I have already had a chance, Hannah and I met last week. Um, it was beautiful. Um, so it's a good thing you approved the, um, I'm glad you approved the contract. <laughs> I'm doing a lot to get you, get you rolling already. The, I got a lot of feedback. Was somebody not needed? Can you yeah, use the owl for the time being? Because there's a lot of feedback from the, uh, the board room there. Oh, Especially okay. screaming children, maybe in the background who are playing basketball. Okay. Should we close? We can close that. Door. Okay. Kale's got it. I can't even hear. Thank things. you, Kale. So, Katya, it's not just me. It's <laughs> yeah. Wow, you guys can hear more than we can. Well, the owl's red now. Does that mean it's muted? Yeah, we might not be, they may not be able to hear us, but they can speak. You want... Can you hear us? Now I hear nothing, so I don't know what that Yeah, the owls are to start. Okay. Hopefully, Great. maybe the Maybe we need to mute. So, um, I, and, and I, and Hannah mentioned this, I think it was Hannah that mentioned this. Um, I put together the process and timeline for you and, um, it is pretty condensed, and that's because um, you are starting a, probably about a month later than I wish you were starting. Um, so we're trying to front things here, and it can change 
Um, you have to mute that owl, unfortunately. There's way too much feedback with the owl. I don't, I don't want to, no, I don't, don't want to mess up the pre computer system with the owl. Sorry about that. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you, Katya, for, for um, advocating for that. <laughs> um, so you you are probably um, about, a, I wish it was a month ago, but we'll, we're going to do what we can do. And um, when I present a timeline, it is always dependent upon how we move through the process and what happens. You know, this is, this is maybe the ideal situation if we could accomplish um, the, the search process following this, but it may not happen. And so uh, it's very fluid and it will change and it will change depending upon your needs as a board and what you see bubble up. So I just want you to know that. So it's my best thinking at this time. And I, and it's, it's helpful to try to, um, to wrap up the process in early March. That's ideal. This is really the window when super when folks are looking for new work and they're pretty much signing contracts. Um, at, you know, at the beginning of March, if they're if they're re-upping or if they're looking for a new position. So you do really have a fairly small window, but we might make it and we might not. Um, so it's really going to depend upon um, the quality of candidates that you get to apply, and are you are you feeling that you have some choices um, in candidates that you're interested in? So I frame it that way so that you know that we have that flexibility. So um, tonight um, we are going to take I've, and usually um, on the job posting that's the thing that I think should happen immediately and I'd like to post that by Friday if I could and um, ideally too I always I, I like to um, see if boards are interested in doing a stakeholder feedback survey where we get information from all of your stakeholders on the qualities and skills they're looking for um so that i use that to inform uh, the job posting when i draft it so i don't feel that we have that luxury right now to do that but that being said i still would recommend that you do have me put together a survey that you can give to your stakeholders because that information could be really valuable to you as a board and as a screening committee as you work through the process so you have a sense of what folks are looking for out there. And that data would be, it would, it, it, the data would come back to me by saying, okay, if you're, you know, you identify, I'm a central office person. This is, you know, here are the qualities and the skills I think are really important. I'm a parent. Here's what I really would like to see in our next superintendent. So we'll get some good data and, that data, I like to tell right out front, that is really for the consumption of the board and the screening committee. It's not a survey that we're then gonna turn out to the whole public. So it's important to know that that's, and I put that right in the survey, but the intent is to inform the process. It is not, the intent is not to inform the public about the results from that survey just so you understand that. So um, I have drafted um, I have drafted a job posting and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so let me ask first, are there any, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit more about screening committee tonight and um, screening committee and about communications, but is there anything at all in just general in the process and timeline that you have questions about or you need some clarification or you're concerned about? Thank you, Lane. Okay. Uh, anyone here in the room? Nope, it no? seems pretty straightforward to me, and I'm I'm just anxious to get going <laughs> because I know we're we're behind the eight ball a little bit. Sure. So I want to make sure we get a get some good candidates. Okay. Okay. So if that's if so let's let's move through some of the things tonight. Under January, I had a, a list of things I felt that the board needed to address tonight. Um, the, the first thing that we really need to get a handle on is the screening committee. So I've put together for you a document, the screening committee charge. 
And the screening committee's work, really, that's uh, uh, made up of, um, as you can see, I'm recommending three board members, one from each of the member towns, two building administrators, two central office, a couple of teachers, and a support staff person. So a committee of 10. That screening committee, um, they will meet um, a couple of times, and I already have some dates. It's going to be in early February, and I think it was February. I looked at my looking at my calendar, and I can get this information out to all of you. Um, but it's going to be maybe February first or second as our first meeting, which would be virtual. Second meeting, looking at candidates, would be. Um, I'm recommending February 6th or 9th. So it's some consolidated work for that screening committee. And in between, they will, the screening committee will have access to all of the resumes that come in. I'll be sharing that and you'll be doing some ranking and looking and seeing who do you want to interview. So screening committee folks, as we as we drum up interest in that work, our board members, if you're concerned, if you're considering it know that that work is there's this you'll be busy for a couple of weeks um not i try to take as much off of your plate as i possibly can um but know that the first meeting would be we're looking at a first meeting of virtual probably only about an hour or so to organize ourselves then as a screening committee you will take a look at resumes you'll do some ranking i will be giving you interview questions to to look at to make some decisions about and we'll do all of that through you know email communication and you'll have a, a shared google folder and then um we will get together face to face to have a discussion about who we want to interview as semifinalists. so that that meeting we will um that's probably be a probably about a two-hour meeting we'll get together and do that. So um, what we have to figure out tonight with that screening committee charge is how you populate that. And, and it would be good to get that populated sooner than later. I put on there that it, I put on your timeline, really need to have those identified by January 19th. I, I think that that's pretty critical. So um, these folks are, are really serving in a capacity for the board. It's a, it's, you know, you're, it's a really an ad hoc committee. So I think you need to do, a pro I'm recommending one of two things. You would either, if there's a board member, um, here tonight that knows they want to be on that committee tonight, you as a board should give that person authority to work with me to finalize that membership so we can get going. Um, or I hear you have a special meeting, so I don't know if you could get that committee populated by Friday, but if that was possible, if you could identify those folks by Friday, when you have your special meeting, you could vote on that membership, um, and on that, you know, who's going to actually, um, serve on that committee. So those things have to happen very, very quickly. So I, I don't, you know, thoughts on how you would fit, you know, how you would generate that interest, like how you might identify those teachers or central office, any ideas on that? Sometimes people put, sometimes there's an email that goes out to folks and soliciting interest. Um, I do have a question. I've actually been um, approached by several people now um, who are in, who are interested in serving on whatever committee might be part of the hiring process. Um, so I have kind of this running list I'm just jotting names down on, but in, in other hiring processes you've been involved in, does a call go out and people can express interest or is it because people happen to take it upon themselves to already reach out? How, how would we do this? How? I think, I mean, what, where I, what I think is important to um, be really transparent about it and to put it out to, I think it's important to put it out to everybody. So in, 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 so that there's an email that goes out to all the teachers. Um, I can give you the information. Here are the dates. There's not a lot of, because we're on that tight schedule, there's not a flexibil a lot of flexibility about those dates. So that may be impossible. You know, some people may look at that and say, well, I can't do that. So, um, 
But I would put out an email to central office. I would put out an email to teachers and um, support staff and, and building administrators. And I think that that's the best way to handle that. And it's a quick turnaround. But then you do need to make some, you know, you can decide as a board, you know, are we going to look at representation? So we have representation from our buildings. That's probably important too. If you don't want the building administrator and teacher and support staff all from the school, mm -hmm. so the diversity of representation. Um, and you may, if, if you have that, you may just say, you know what, we're just going to do it randomly. We're going to say right now, we want a diversity of representation. If we have multiple folks interested from a building, we're just going to randomly select someone to be on that committee. So um, I don't know how you want to approach that. And again, it would be ideal if we had another meeting to talk, you know, you, those come in, you look at it, you make that decision, but I don't think you have that luxury. So, um, so right now I think if, if I guess probably, Hannah, it's you putting out an email to those groups of people, maybe working with Kyle to, to make sure she gets those right groups of folks and mm -hmm. ask for a turnaround. And um, people probably will respond pretty quickly if, if you got that out and you wanted to have that done by Friday, they probably would do that, you know, um, and then you could decide at your meeting about that membership. That's that's that might be ideal since you're meeting. That's doable. Yeah, absolutely. And mm -hmm. I, you're absolutely right. If we can include those dates in there, I think that will help pare it down anyway. But um, equal playing field. Let's. Um, so, Hannah, I'll, I'll send I'll send that to you tonight exactly right. um, when they'll be meeting and what those responsibilities would be. And um, I think it's good to include a copy of the charge so they see what they're is you know, what's spelled out there. So I think that would be great. So um so that would be perfect. So if you're gonna we can you can add that and then on Friday you can just vote on here's the membership for the screening committee and you'll be all set. Okay. Got it. That sounds good. Um communications um, I've already spoken with Kyle and she's great and she's connected me with a couple of fo of your IT folks and so I'm going to be communicating with all three of them and um, what I suggested to Hannah when we met is that I think it's really important to keep um, all of your stakeholders informed about the process so I am I am happy to develop the, some content, the, the content to post on your website. Um, I just needed a connection um, with your system as to who would actually do that posting. So I think we've got that worked out. And um, the things that I would like once this is approved, you know, we'll I'll just put out a quick little blurb that will let the public know that you've started the process and that here's here's the job just you know here's the job posting here's our process and timeline i do an abbreviated version of that for everybody so a lot of the documents you already have the screening committee charge but i just think it's important to have that information out there so so um i will work with um with kyle on getting that out is, is there anybody have any other thoughts about what they wanted to do around communication that you know is not that, or in, in addition to that? Looks like people are good. Okay. All right, great. Um, I think, I think I am good until we get to our job posting. So, um, and oh, the board. I do want to talk about the timeline. So I have here on your next meeting agenda just for a little bit. Um, even though it is Valentine's Day, that's you guys, you know, what are you doing having a meeting on Valentine's Day? <laughs> I don't know what that says, but um we will um I will have I will then at that time I want to talk to you. We could have a conversation about what do you want the final interview process to look like? Do you want to 
have uh, different stakeholder groups interviewed? Do you want that to solely be you? Do you want visitation, you know, candidates visiting? So we'll talk about all of that, but that, that will come around in the block next month. Um, yeah, deeper into this. Um, but Repeat the last thing you said, Jackie. Sorry. Oh, good. I don't think I have anything else for you right now. Um, oh, I oh I do want to tell you that I for all the board, um, I will share. I will develop a shared Google folder for you with all of the documents in it, so that you have easy access to them. And um, when the process and timeline doc is modified. Um, I just always put that at the top. So that does change, you know, something that will change. And we'll put the names of the committee once the screening committee is identified. So there'll be some live docs in there, but that's where you can find everything. And if you have a question, never hesitate to reach out. I, I'll, I'll turn, I turn, you know, turn around your question very quickly. So thanks. Um, so these probably don't want to in there. But we, we're going to go into executive session. Right. Oh, these are extras? Yes. Yeah. Do we have email copies of that? I, uh, my laptop's dead. Uh, and my phone doesn't connect to the internet here. So if someone. I can scan it and email it. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. I just, there's, um, there's a typo on this and on this. So if you're going to vote on it, I just wanted to throw that out there. OK. We can, yeah. Um, Katya, Sarah, and Megan, uh, Heather is going to scan and email the job posting now, um, and we have paper copies of it, and then we'll go into executive session. Just, uh, um, Patty? Hi. Is, uh, hey. we've got actually, we've got to add a good new job. I don't spell Oh, my God. My recommendation would be the, the first part of monitoring organization. Yeah, that's where it was. So, our, our apologies, too. No, that's... No, no worries. There was a... Yeah, there was yeah. a lot of business with trying to get the budget numbers from, from the state. Um, so, that's an oversight of mine on the agenda, so we do need to vote to add it in there. Um, where are we adding it? at the top of monitoring organization. I make a motion that we add Patty to section three. Section three monitoring an organization. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Sam. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Katya. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be opposed, unfortunately, because I think that's not open meeting. We did not we did not do that at the top of the at the top of the meeting. I'm so sorry. OK, so. Um, we can push it through. There's some violation. You're not you're not voting on anything on it. No, but we're adding something to the agenda that's not warned to the public. Yep. It, um, that's true. We will be in uh, violation, so I do have an uh, opposition vote. Um, People have voted to put, to put it in. I mean, so right. So Ellen Koch is pointing out that it, we would be in violation of open meeting law if we were to do that. So and if we take no action, there's nothing to cure. So it's to receive information. Yeah. So how does the protocol work if someone? wants us to redo the presentation next meeting we have to do that. That would be a cure, but would we have to cure that if there's no action? If there's no action? 
Well, the action is adding it to the agenda at this point mm -hmm. of the meeting. That's right, we did that. That would, I can possibly. What if, oh no, because it wouldn't be there. No. You can come back. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm, getting, I'm getting a message from Patty that she's willing to come back. We right, we do have a motion on the table, so I don't know if that mover, um, Oscar. Oscar. Their motion. Her name's on here twice. What? Oh, that's Chelsea. Chelsea. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but we could use that. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It was, it was a big typo. Oh. <laughs> okay, what do I do? Say, I would rescind my I move to vacate the vote. Is that really? I don't know. Oh, no. oh, you could ask her her opinion. <sighs> yeah, uh, draw my motion. So the the vote has been vacated. Uh, it's been moved to be vacated. That needs to be seconded and voted on. The withdrawal of the motion. I think you can just withdraw the motion. I think so too. Even after it's yeah. been voted on. It. I didn't finish the vote. And that's for extensions. <laughs> so I'm going with that, and 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 someone can put in a complaint about me personally. <laughs> um, and with our sincere apologies and um, and and our gratitude for your flexibility and understanding, we will see you in February. Thank you. Yeah. What's that? Can we come back to Braintree in February? Even if we're not in Braintree, I will come and pick you up. <laughs> I never know. It's, it's okay. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank okay. you. And thank you, Katya, for yet again keeping us on the right straight and narrow. I feel like such a downer in the party because we're here. Sorry about that. <laughs> not appropriate. Uh, no, I'm, I'm very appreciative, Katya. Thank you. Get down. No, I'm kidding. Um, okay, so what, uh, now uh, I will entertain a motion to enter executive session with guests um, to discuss uh, contractual issues having to do with the job posting. Uh, is Kyle on this, or do I need to take notes? I, I will need everyone to if we enter executive session, although, yes, so the guests I'm thinking would be Jackie. Jackie, stay. Kyle can stay and take minutes. Kyle can stay and take minutes if that's okay with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's fine with me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are we doing the 4,500 in this too? So we need, we need a motion. Uh, yes, we'll come back into yeah. public session, then go back into for executive the session for the 4,500. Thanks, yes. Okay. But so yes, I'm looking for a motion. Okay, uh, I move that we enter executive session including Jackie, Kyle, and Lane and Heather. Right. Mm -hmm. Or, I don't not Lane and Heather. So. I make a motion to enter executive session including Jackie and Kyle. Uh, do I have a second? I'll second those. Oh. Thank you. Katya is seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Opposed? Abstentions. Unanimously, we got one through. So I'm going to give me just a second to switch folks over. Of course. I'm going to switch over um, for there's an executive session link that folks were sent. Um, so we're going to switch out of this meeting and move into the executive session room. Just a moment here. And then when you guys are ready, just let us know. We'll hang out in the office across the hall. Okay. Okay. I should be here. Okay. We're back in public session. Um, so I want to just bring up um, from Heather, thank you, a, a correction to the job posting that we're all looking at. 
um, in the second paragraph, one, two, I think third sentence, Randolph Union middle and high schools. It's just high, it needs to be middle and high. Oh, and also the high has a capital, capital I. I. And the high has a capital I. Or an L. Let's be real here. So just a quick typo there. I missed that. What, what was the other? Randolph? It's Randolph Middle and High Schools. And high, the I needs to be lowercase. Randolph Union okay. Middle and High. Oh, I see. I got you. Okay. Randolph Union Middle and High. Oh, I just said that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Is that the only one? Uh, those two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have any? And I do want to say I took some, you know, and, and I will not have heart feelings. I took some, some liberties when I did the, you know, talking about the OSSD communities. I don't know if that's what you want, but I, you know, I really don't know. Um, so if it's, if it's something you'd rather have there, you just let me know. No, it's not great. No, I thought it sounded great. Okay. I want to live here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and anything, any, um, I, I heard back from a couple of you that gave me some ideas of things you thought were important. And then I just went through some searches I had done before that have been recent and pulled information from there around qualities and skills. So um, have I captured it for you? Or are you good with it? Is there anything you want to see changed or added? I'm seeing head shakes here. Anyone online? Head shakes there. So we should vote on this. Okay. Yeah. Yes? So I'll entertain the motion. I move that we accept the superintendent job posting presented to us by Jackie. With the discussed edits. With the, With the discussed edits. Thank I you. second it. Moved by Anne, seconded by Chelsea. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh. Thank you. Online. Opposed? Abstentions. The motion passes unanimously. Um, I'd also at this time like to uh, ask whether there are board members interested on serving on the screening committee. I would be willing. Anne is interested. Three would be nice. One from each town. One, One from, from each, each town. town. So thank you, Anne from Randolph. <laughs> Day. I'll do it. All right. Thank you, Sam from Brookfield. Thank you. Yeah. Are the Braintree people glaring yeah. at each yeah. other electronically? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving Katya a stare down. <laughs> I'm like, which one of us is gonna fold first? <laughs> Still neither has. Oh, great. Um, I'll do it. Thanks, Katya. The only. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Anne, Sam, and Katya, who will be uh, the board representatives on the screening committee. Um, and I'll be sending out a letter to see who uh, who's going to join you. Uh, so should we task somebody with um, corresponding with Jackie on this matter? On what matter? Being the point person. Yeah. From the committee, you mean? Yeah. I moved to Sam as the point. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Correspondence with Jackie. Can we be a little more upbeat? <laughs> no. I mean, this okay. is exciting work. I don't know. It is exciting. Do you have time? I, I have time. I would, but I would much rather Ann be the person on this one. <laughs> uh, so. I think you're, you're quite good at getting things going and <laughs> setting meetings and and being responsive. And yes, I think you're great. Not at managing that, so. the Google Docs so much, but Jackie will be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a fluke. Great. So Jackie, Anne will be your point person on the um, okay. screen. Okay, great. 
I do have a, I do have an advertising question to ask you. So I'll get this posted. Um, VSBA has a school spring um, account, so I'll post it through them. It makes it easier for me to manage uh, because, and, and then I'll give accounts to all the screening committee members and I'll do all of that. I do have a question. So we'll do school spring. The only other place you might want to consider um, there's the, the National Association of School Superintendents, and it's a reasonable fee. They charge 205 bucks to place an ad with them, and it goes out to a lot of superintendents nationwide. And um, there's the, you know, AASA also does that, but they're 1200 bucks, and <laughs> the National Association of Superintendents. So, you know, it's not a heavy lift. If you're if you're interested in that, I could work with Kyle. Yes. Just most of it. No, yeah. it's yeah. Yeah. hundred bucks. Yes, you do. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Yes, please. It being budgetary, can I have a vote, please? It having to do with Rick, money. Rick, can you move that? Um, it's for how long is it? For how long does it run? Does it just just go out one time? Like, what's the what's go the? Go out one time, yes. and but it, yeah, it'll go out one time, and I think that's. Like via yeah. email or a newsletter or like where, where the they, they, it will go, it goes, they have a newsletter, goes out, it gets posted. One time. Yeah. But I think that's enough because everybody gets it. They get their, I, I think that's fine. If they're looking, they're looking. Yeah, exactly. You know, and if we get into a situation, you know, if we get into a situation, we just don't have enough candidates or the quality candidates you want, we'll be, we'll, I'll be talking to you about what else do we do. Um, for, you know, outreach. Um, the reality is that I just did a search last year on um, Windsor and we got a dozen applicants and I will tell you, I was happy with that. We, you know, it wasn't a lot, but we had, a, we had around three or four people that were high quality. So if you get that, I think you, you should be happy. So, so um, there's just not a lot of folks out there right now. Did you use that national search when you were working with them? I did not. So that one I'm just using. Um, I'm also doing the the search for um, Jeff Francis's position, the VSA executive director. So mm -hmm. we're trying to get a little wider audience on that. And so this, so when we were researching it, this came across my desk and I was like, you know, this is kind of reasonable. So and and I asked some of the superintendents there and they said, yeah, we get that newsletter. I'm like, OK, so that might be, you know, it's not outrageous, uh, outrageous fee. Mm -hmm. What do we think? Yeah. Does anyone feel strongly enough to make a motion? Oh, wow. Oh. Okay, you go. I move that we um, send our superintendent add to the, or that we have Jackie send our superintendent add to the National yeah. Association of School Superintendents and the, so, the, the financial implications as discussed. Second. Thank you, Rachel. Seconded by Sam. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Opposed? Extensions. Passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, my last question for you. Um, do you want to, because I would want to do this probably the end of January, so it would be before I see you again in February. Um, do you want me to put together a stakeholder survey that then would be distributed to all your stakeholders around qualities and skills? Yes. Yeah. I really think we need to do that. Okay. I have a pretty standard one. I mean, it's 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 relevant. It's been updated recently. And I work with some of my colleagues who also do searches and we share resources. So I'll put that together and I'll work with Kyle and her IT folks to get that out. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Sounds good. I think I, I don't have anything else for you unless you have something for me. Gratitude. Thanks so much, That's Jackie. It. Thank you. Also, I'm looking forward to work. Some of you have worked with you before. Looking forward to reconnecting, and we'll get it done. Awesome. Excellent. Thank you, Thank you so much, Jackie. Thank you. Bye.
Okay, I'll now entertain a motion to re-enter executive session. Mm -hmm. uh, to discuss 4500 investigation. I make a motion that we enter executive session to discuss the 4500. I'll second. Sarah seconded. <clears throat> All those in well, hold on. No, yep. discussion. Discussion, this, please. This um, meets the criteria for executive session because we were talking about student issues, personnel issues. It, because the personnel this relates to is so limited, they could be easily identified. Okay. Personnel. So personnel. Personnel. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and do we, yeah, I'm do gonna, we need to recuse? May I recuse myself uh, from this executive session? Yeah, Indeed you. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor of the motion on the table to enter? Aye. 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 Great. It passes unanimously. Um, with invitations. Oy. Well, I don't think we have to actually say it. We can just Mm -hmm. We just invite. I don't think it yes, we do. Yeah, we have to say it in the, mm -hmm. we have to say mm -hmm. the motions. If they're not board members, yeah, because yeah. they're not executive members. Okay. Who are we inviting? Kayla. Kayla, Lane, Lane. Heather. Heather. And Kyle. Okay. Kyle to take So notes. I have to restate my. Mm -hmm. I make a motion that we enter executive session to discuss 4500s with Kayla, Lane, Kyle. Heather and not Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Who's recusing himself? <laughs> okay. Sarah, do you re-second? Yes, she does. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, she does. I've got a hand. All those yes. uh, further discussion. All those in favor? Hi. Visually, Hi. audibly. On your boat. Great. Unanimously. Uh, we will now be moving to that link and be back in public session following. Thank you.
<laughs> so it's all right here. You get better cell service out there in the lobby. Hey, uh, tuned into the Wi Fi. If you want to do that, it's just your email, your username, and then your password for your email. Unless my board email. You can get on as a guest, too. No, I don't too much for my Okay, but we're yeah. we're going. We have one board member in the restroom, but we still have a quorum in the room. Um, except uh, EL reports two point four and two point five, financial planning and budgeting, and emergency superintendent succession. These are a second reading, and hopefully to a vote. Lane, do you want to say anything? Uh, the first one is about financial. Um, Hold on, let me orient myself here. <laughs> so I'm trying to get the, the budget stuff up too. So doo -doo -doo -doo, financial planning and budgeting, that's just making sure that when we are going through the budgeting process, which we are, um, is that we're taking a look at what the financial landscape in the future is going to be and taking that into account as we're planning our budget. So like, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about the next five years and the 5% cap. Um, you know, those are the things that we're taking into account as we're trying to plan out, you know, what, what this current budget is and what the, as a strategy also to say what the next budget's right, right? We had this overall goal of trying to get at 5.1% of the cap, which completely got blown out of the water when we talked about it in, 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 a, in a little while. Um, but then our strategies are based upon, you know, what we can tell is happening in the financial landscape over time. The succession piece is just about making sure that we've got a person who can step in in, in case of uh, the superintendent's incapacitation immediately. And then the reminder that within that report um, is the instructions to the board that uh, of how to actually change over the powers. Um, most of the powers of the superintendent are signatory. Um, how to change that over to a second person, you know, who to contact at the AOE and that sort of stuff. Uh, questions from the board on 2.4. That's financial planning and budgeting. The monitoring report. Questions on the evidence. Uh, 2.5. Questions, comments, concerns. All right, I'll entertain a motion. I move that we accept monitoring report 2.4, financial planning and budgeting, and I'm gonna just do the second one as well, yep. and monitoring report for policy 2.5, emergency superintendent succession. Thank you, do I have a second? Second from Rachel. Further discussion? All those in favor? Physically audibly? Aye. 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 Great. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes unanimously for both of those. Okay, budget presentation. Yeah, I think I actually, I actually got it up there. So, uh, a couple of caveats as I'm kind of wrapping up the setup of this. Give me two seconds here. Um, just so folks know, I'm not going to be giving you as much background or information as I normally do. The final numbers that we needed came in at like 5 o'clock this afternoon. And so I was scrambling around just trying to get the slides prepared that were needed to allow the board to be able to vote on the budget. And so that's important to know. Um, if we do a little bit of a, a start here. Um, basic changes that occurred since we spoke last meeting. Um, the state actually uh, did some major corrections in terms of uh, our student counts. Um, they had seriously undercounted uh, our students that are impoverished or free and reduced lunch counts. And those students get a significant amount of waiting uh, under the new law. 
So it actually bolstered how much money we were receiving with the state that we didn't expect. I'm just curious, are they still relying on, on us as a district making sure that our families fill out that free and reduced lunch form? It's kind of a, and Heather can probably talk a little less bit so. more about it. Less, it's less so. so. We're now able to use SNAP numbers and people who access Medicaid, uh, Dr. Dinosaur, um, nice. they automatically qualify. Yeah. So it, that's really helped because people don't have to apply for things twice, right, nice. to help our numbers. It's been really great. And Willie Walker, our new uh, director of uh, child nutrition, has done a great job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, he, he was the one that helped pick up on, some of it was uh, the undercount was our own under-reporting. I think it was at the high school, and they picked up on it. We were able to get it corrected from the state. Um, so it did make a big impact. So what they were doing with this new new weighting system is, uh, right, they recognized that some students, um, just because of their backgrounds or their histories, would require a little bit more funding to be able to get an equitable education to their peers. And so instead of just saying, you know, we're going to give you, because you got this many students that are in free and reduced lunch, we're going to give you this much extra money. They did it in this really weird way. They said, okay, we're going we're gonna to multiply the number of students that you actually have. So we have 850 to 870 students in the district. After they did this waiting study, they are giving us credit for about 1,523 students. So that's an important number to think about because it also kind of comes back to the level of need that we have in the district. So we ended up with a lot more um, funding coming in from the district, which will for the district from the state, which you'll see in a minute, um, which is is really really good because it it mitigated the impact of the legislative changes um, quite a bit. It's still not perfect. So you know instead of everybody paying an extra fifteen hundred dollars a year because of the legislative change, it's closer down to on an average price point closer to around four hundred dollars is the end. Um, remember, the governor was kind of actually talking about this a little bit um, earlier. He said, you know, the average increase is going to be 18% for folks in terms of their taxes going up. And so we can compare that to what you actually see in a couple minutes. We're actually doing really, really well um, because of that change. So we had talked about this idea, the strategy of trying to create the budget so that we are able to maximize the next person's choices in terms of, of, of how they're administering it. And we talked about the 5% cap, in that if you're not over the 5% cap, you lose it. The 5% cap means is that if your tax rates go up more than, more than 5%, um, you're only going to get charged for 5%, right? And so we talked a little bit about the, the long-term impact of that, that that money would have to get paid back, you know, five years down the road if it becomes a permanent part of the budget, yada, yada, yada. But what ended up happening was this correction had such an impact on the overall budget that we're nowhere near even coming close to the 5% cap. In fact, we're actually 9.91% below it. So that strategy up front of trying to always make sure we're hitting the cap and going a little over, we'd have to add three or four million dollars to the budget to get there. So after that, that correction. So it's not a good strategy anymore now that we've got new numbers. Um, so just to kind of fill, fill people in that we're following along in the, the three conversations that we had prior to. So this is the recommended budget um, for the OSSD, right? You have three budgets. You've got the Raven budget. You've got the tech center budget and you've got the OSSD budget. So there were a couple of little changes after we had the discussion with the board last year that, that, that I'll talk about in just a moment. The budget can be split up in terms of what we're asking for into mandated obligation and discretionary spending. Mandated means we just we don't have a choice, right? Um, there's the increases to salary and benefits that, that's required because of our contract agreements. Um, there's the special education increases um, that are required. We have to provide those services to kids because that's what their needs were identified as. There's this early education child care tax uh, that they slipped in kind of under the radar that they're using to try to find a way to fund early education, right? You know, they're talking about preschool and making universal, you know, four-year-old preschool um, across the state. And so that's the way they're trying to fund it. 
And then we've got the tuition impact of RTCC. When RTCC's tuitions go up, because we pay tuition from OSSD for our students to go there, it has an impact on us as a district. And so this 1.4 million, um, almost 1.5 million, is all kind of mandated obligations. We don't have a choice about it. So the discretionary pieces of the budget, these are things that, you know, we could live without. It might not be great. It might not be nice if we did, but we could, that we're asking for in this are these things. Um, the preschool. Um, we had spent an enormous amount of time building a four-year-old full-day preschool um, in the district. Um, two of the preschools are already under the regular budget. The third, right, because we've got three elementary schools, the third is actually uh, still under grant funding. And if we want to preserve it, the grant funding is running out, we've got to move it over to the regular budget. It has had an impact on the uh, performance of the students as the elementary level. You can see the impact of the students that have gone through preschool in terms of the scores um, that we've had. And so it's been kind of a vital component in trying to meet the board's ends. Um, we talked a little bit about this, about the idea of adding a little bit so that we have a full-time nurse at each of our schools, especially the elementary schools. With uh, one of the ideas being is, yeah, maybe the medical needs aren't necessarily requiring it, but these are really capable and talented people so that as we're dealing with these students with the mental health issues who are capable of spending a little bit of time with the child, do, do, do re-regulating them, getting them back down to a baseline so they can get back and be successful in class. So they're actually, the purpose of doing this is to help a little bit with that mental health component. Um, the two new ones um, that we put in here came out of conversations with uh, Braintree and Brookfield. Um, had a great conversation with Braintree at the end of last week. Um, as you know, you know, RES has been resistant to sharing the RISE program supports. Until that gets resolved, uh, Braintree and Brookfield have been without support. And so this is a means to actually provide that to them. Um, there is also additional funding, you know, they were each hoping to get two new bodies. There is additional funding that they'll be able to tap, hopefully with Heather next year through title, um, to get the second body. Um, but we did add in this first one. Um, this was a big discussion with the, 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 the board, and it seemed like the board was on board with it, which is having a human resources director in central office. There are 262 employees within this district. I have been the primary human resources person for all of them um, for the last six, seven years. Um, especially when you are looking for a new person to come in, you know, one of the questions that, that I'm asking when I go out to interview is one of the things that is making me decide on a district or not is who they have on staff um, because there's a protective element to this. If I'm the one that is always going in and doing all those, those investigations and, and giving people bad news at times, if I'm always the one that is doing all the negotiations and being the face of negotiations with the staff, that doesn't necessarily keep a good relationship um, going. And so I think this is going to be vital to the success uh, of your new superintendent. Inflation, we've got to add a little bit to help out the, the custodians actually um, be able to get the supplies they need to do their work. So, what you've got in total between the mandated and then the discretionary is a $2.1 million increase. If folks remember over the course of time, I've been taking the surplus money with the voters' help and the board's help. We've been putting into, into an operational reserve fund that we then tap um, to help subsidize future budgets. Um, so we've still got at least three years, you're, if you vote, depending upon how you vote tonight, you'll have at least four more years of these subsidies to be able to use. So even though we're going up by 2.7 on the expense side, there's an additional $1 million in revenues to offset it. So our total increase in the budget is about $1 million for all these things. With the biggest portion of it, and this is not a, a complaint, is increases to salary and benefits for the staff. The staff got between an 8% increase in terms of the teachers, 
The support staff got close to a 9% increase um, this year, and so, you know, it's the, it's the board doing its job, making sure that the staff are well taken care of. Um, so this is the recommended budget. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the tax implications because that's what people really care about. Um, before we do that, it's important to talk about, again, make sure that people understand what's within our control and what's not. In terms of the budget and, and the taxes that people pay within the community, we control a little bit revenue, right? We generate some revenue, and we can control our discretionary expenses. Those are the two things that are in our control within this overall picture. We do generate a fairly significant amount of revenue for students that choose to come here. I believe last year it was $630,000. Um, and so that helps out a little bit. The things that are out of our control, and one of these is special to this year, is they have this uh, Tier 1 tax base, right? This is the amount of money that the state has decided that it needs to earn and pay per student um, at a minimal level to make sure that every student is getting what they need to be considered equitably educated. Right? And so when they did this huge legislative change um, in terms of, of how taxes are calculated, that tier one tax rate was reset. And you'll see that in the next slide, what, what that looks like. Um, right? They started to assume that students, schools like uh, us, who only have 850 kids, Based upon those students' needs, we really should be getting paid for the equivalent of 1,533 students. When they do that, they've got to raise more tax money because that was true for most schools in the, in, in, in the, in the state uh, to be able to pay them for that. The other thing that we don't have control over is the common level of appraisal. And so that's the increase that has occurred in the, the value of people's properties. Right? And so what happens is every year the state goes out and does a survey and it takes a look at what the, the properties are selling in each town and then it takes a look at the grand list and it says, okay, you know, you are assessing them in your town at this level and this is the taxes that you're asking them to pay based upon this amount. But in reality, your houses are selling for up here. So this is the amount that you need to be paying taxes on and that's what the CO. And across the state, everybody's home values have not only gone up, but in some cases have gone up significantly. And when that happens, the state is going to expect you to pay the taxes for that additional value of your home. And again, that is out of our control. Um, and then the last piece is, right, we got those mandated and contractual expenses. They just, they are what they are. You know, we've made agreements, we've got to live up to them. Um, all right. This is the piece, this is the only piece that anybody, anybody cares about. 2023-24 tax rate, that's the current year that we're in in Braintree, was $1.57 for every $100 of assessed value of your home. So if you know how many, if you know the value of your home and, and you divide it so you know how many hundreds there are in it to get it up to, you know, what it's worth, um, you multiply it by this number and that tells you what your taxes are. So in Braintree last year, this was their tax rate. Their CLA is this. What this number means is that based upon that state survey, the people in Braintree are really only, they're, they're only being assessed at 79% of the actual value of their homes. So they need to be paying significantly more, right? There's 20% that they're currently not paying taxes on that they should, and so their tax rates are going to go up. And so they start at 157. Between the reset, right, that happened because of the legislation, and the change in their property values, they're going to be at $1.70 or almost $1.71 per $100 in assessed value next year. The overall impact, if you have a $350,000 home, you can expect your taxes to go up $480. If your home is worth more than this, then your taxes will go up proportionally to that. If it's worth less than this, it'll go down proportionally to that. Uh, Brookfield, right, they had reassessed, but they had some other quirky things that were going on, which was kind of interesting. Um, where they're going to be at, at this point is they're at $1.42, um, almost $1.43 per $100 in assessed value. 
So on a $350,000 property between last year and this year, they can expect their taxes to go up $543. And Randolph is actually the winner this year in terms of this huge change that's happening legislatively. They had a really dramatic increase in the, the value of their properties, but they're going to only be paying an extra $274, again, on the average price of home. And again, I'm going really fast and... Now, yeah, why, why is that? Why is the, that so low? The, the Randolph one? Yeah. Um, because their taxes were already pretty high last year. And so, so what happened with Brookfield is, right, they're, they're paying 95% of what they're supposed to. You would expect their taxes to be lower than this. But what happened was that when they reassessed last year, um, the assessments were too high. So they actually got a cut because they were paying more than they should. So they got a cut in their taxes. But this year, because they're now below the value that they should be paying, they lost that cut that they received, and now they've got to pay taxes on that extra 5% on top of it. And so they got hit the largest. Um, so <coughs> what, what can you suggest the implications are for Randolph going through a reassessment right now? So if they follow the same pattern, and Braintree's going through reassessment as well, if they follow the same pattern as Brookfield when it did theirs, is the year after the reassessment is complete, they're going to see a dramatic decrease in their taxes, and then a year later it'll kind of bounce back up. <laughs> um, that, that was the pattern that happened with Brookfield. So, that is the tax in, in impact on the three towns based upon this budget. Um, the other thing, when you get to the point, because all this is voted on in your consent agenda, um, and this was the number that literally came in just before I arrived at this meeting, so I apologize about the slide may not be all that clear. Um, we are looking at the surplus money from the 2022-23 year and trying to determine what we do with it. At the end of 2023, between reimbursements and grants and everything, we had $1.4 million that was left over that was unspent. And so... With that money, what we've already done is we've taken 350000 of it because we can just do that, and we've rolled it in to help subsidize next year's budget already. So when you're looking at those budget numbers and the tax increases, this 350000 is already helping to, to, to reduce that. We are going to recommend, again, if you vote on this in your consent agenda, that $51,283 of this goes into the operational reserve fund for operational needs that might arise over time. And then the remaining amount to do what we've been doing for the past couple of years, this, this $1,060,000, that it is split into three equal amounts and it will be used to subsidize the 2025 uh, 26 budget, the 2026, 2027, 2027, 2028, those numbers seem really big. <laughs> <laughs> kind of scary in terms of age and stuff, but for those three years. So it, that would be subsidizing each of those budgets for uh, uh, $353,333 per year. <clears throat> and again, I apologize, presentation isn't as clean as it usually is because, like I said, it was last minute. Just yeah. Help me remember again what I say to people when they say, how come you always have this big surplus at the end? Why are you taxing, why are you asking us for so much tax money and then not using it? Actually, so the first, the first, the first piece of this is easy. We are using it to help you with your taxes. Okay. We're having the surplus because where is it going? It's going in to subsidize future right. year's taxes. But then they so, would say, but why aren't you getting it right the first yeah. time? So, yeah. Why do you have the... So uh, there's a, a couple of basic reasons, and Robin is probably the best person to go into detail. Just give me the basic. Yeah, so I'll give, you, I'll give you the basic, I'll give you the basic <laughs> yeah. two. So the first one is, is staffing. If I have people that are retiring that are at the highest yeah. point of the pay scale, and um, they go out and we hire somebody who's at the bottom of the pay scale, that's a significant savings, right? Because when I'm building the budget now, I'm assuming that everybody here now is here next year, but during the summer is when that turnover happens, 
And if people high on the pay scale go out and we hire low, there's a benefit there. There is also uh, situations where the amount of money is even greater because the person that's going out on retirement was taking benefits with us and the person that's coming in low is not taking benefits. Benefits are an additional $40,000 per person. They're huge. Um, the other place uh, where this comes from is, uh, is through what we call reimbursements. We have things that we have to pay for up front. And so those have to be in the budget. I have to have the money to be able to pay for them during the year. And then at the end of the year, the state comes along and says, oh, we're going to reimburse you for that. And so you get that money back and that, add that adds into the surplus. So those, are, those would grants. be... And grants. We have to budget for everything that we want to pay for, but we can often get grants to end up paying for right. it. Mm -hmm. and, and then that surplus. And so prior, and so uh, Heather's point is good. Prior to the COVID years when the when we started to get the ESSER grants, you know, the $7 million of the ESSER grants plus everything else that you've been bringing in on top of it. Yeah. Um, prior to that, the surpluses were in the three hundred dollars to $400,000 range. And so this big jump, when we started hitting these million dollar surpluses, it happened when the grants came along. Uh -huh. And I think a lot of it was is because of that reimbursement, right? We pay for it up front <clears> and <throat> the grant says, oh no, here you go. You can, you can you know, replace that money that you spent mm -hmm. with this. So if that helps. So questions on the surplus and what we're trying to do with it. That was a great question. So yep. the, the 1.1 million that you're using to offset this year's increase mm -hmm. is coming from operational reserves, which is that what that 51 is going into. So uh, do I have something I can scribble on? So what we've done here, I can actually I'll do it right right. So what, what we've done with our surpluses is every year that I have a surplus, we divide it up into three equals. Yeah. And so what's happening? Uh, you're double. Ah, uh, you're tripling. So really. So, so the, yes. Yeah. So what's happening is we're in a position here where we're spending mm -hmm. those right. If this is three hundred fifty thousand, and that's three hundred fifty thousand, and that's three hundred fifty thousand. Because this was one year surplus, this was the next year surplus, and, and we're constantly dividing it by three. We've got a significant chunk of money here. And it's built this way on purpose so that if we ever lose the surplus, you have two years to step it down and yeah. find ways to compensate for what we can't you know, supply through surplus anymore. Okay. So it, it was set up to step it up. And so there's no, what you don't want to have happen is have a year like this and then have nothing the year afterwards. Because then there's going to be some major cuts and things you're going to have to do in the budget to make things work out. Okay. And a huge hike in taxes. And a huge hike in taxes. Can, really you, can you flip back to that yeah. uh, proposed budget gra um, chart? That one? That one, yeah. Yeah. So the 1.07 there, or sorry, the uh, budget subsidy. The, yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the one million three three. That's coming from here, or that's coming. That's coming from. Okay. From here. So you, three hundred and fifty thousand of it, if I remember how Robin did this the last time, is coming from. It's coming directly from this surplus right now. Because legally, if we have a surplus, once the auditors have confirmed that we have it, we can unilaterally just roll it into the next tax year. Yeah. So 350000 of it is coming from the surplus that we're talking about right now. Yeah. The other two chunks of it are coming from previous surpluses that were put into the operational reserve fund yeah. for the purpose of being used this year. Okay. And the voters vote on this in the warning. Um, and I do a really good job of describing to them, if you vote on this, this is what it means. Okay. Um, so that's not to be confused with the 51000 going into operational reserve. No. So the, the bucket is the same. It. It's operational because it's supporting operations of the district. The 51000 is just reserve money. So that 51000 is going to go and sit in that bucket and say something blows up next year and we don't have money to pay for it. The board can then vote to say, oh, this is an operational need, like, hey, as we're working with um, students 
on in terms of the socio-emotional piece, the mental health pieces, we could use some really significant training or a really significant program. We don't have the money because we didn't build it into the budget at the time, but now we can approve it out of this operational reserve fund. You got the money right then and there and you can use it. So we've done a really good job. Of, there's, there's a variety of reserve funds that exist for different purposes that the town's folks have voted money into them for those purposes. And as long as we use them for, for that, we're okay. I don't get access to the money. Nobody does unless the board approves it. So once the money's there, like if it's in the transportation reserve fund for buses, um, the control on this is that the money's there, but I have to come to you with one of those reserve sheets and say, this is the amount of money we want for this. Yeah, and then you guys say either yay or nay. Uh, so good, have, really good questions. I have two questions. Yeah. The early childhood preschool program, how many years has that been going on? At least three. But it was Four? before COVID. Four? So I think it started the year before COVID. Yeah. yeah. And how many kids are in that? Um, if you, the uh, superintendent's report at the end, it's got a, got a chart that shows. So it was kind of funny. Um, it's typically in the 55 to 60 yeah. range, which is about the size of a... Middle school class. Yeah, it's about the size of a full class. Yeah. We, we don't get everybody. Um, we get like 90% of the people um, for it because some folks have a need for the summer and the vacation um, child care component that because this doesn't run on vacations or through the summer, they can't. Yeah. Right, it's more convenient. And then the human resources director, their salary is 167. It wouldn't be the salary. That's everything they Wait, cost. That Because that, it's got to include the potential benefits. Right? Remember, 40000 of that or more will be benefits. So you've got salary, benefits, professional development, transportation costs. Like, it's all together. Yeah. So, so the the sa the sa the actual salary for this, um, if I remember, is is about one fifteen. All the rest of it, and so that's what it is when you're hiring people with with the Cadillac benefits, which is great that we've got. The benefits add a huge chunk of of, of cost in terms of the expense side. We're also talking about one HR director for that many staff members, which two hundred sixty two. Isn't it recommended there's like one <clears throat> or one per fifty? Yeah. I mean, yeah. And and again, this is this is another other another piece of it that we didn't talk about is one of the things that they do is they help keep the staff happy, mm -hmm. right? Because that's okay. So you're having issues. Let, let's sit down. Let's let's take some time. They've got the time to actually go into detail and work with them and help them a little bit more than somebody who's rushing around. They're a resource. Yes. <laughs> and so it, this is a way to improve relationships with staff. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. So when would you hire someone like that, like after the uh, March meeting? You could, as soon, Look so 30 days after the budget passes, yeah. we can start hiring. Because anybody can challenge the budget for 30 days after it's, it's passed. They can do a petition to do a, a revote. Always fun. Vermont's really complicated. It's so complicated. Massachusetts, you all went into town hall, and whoever showed up got to vote off the floor. And if the eyes had it, the, the budget passed. Well, I think you do a good job with the budget. Okay. No, I, I, pre I appreciate that yes. a lot. Yeah, you do. But again, this isn't one of my best presentations because stuff was, was low. So um, the other thing uh, to remember is that the board gave the recommendation for what to do with RTCZ, but didn't actually vote to approve the budget. So just a reminder of where we're at. The, the board said go, go with you know combining the dental and the health program together and then moving the dean from the grant-funded the ESSER grants to the local budget. And so that means that the tuition is going to go up from 22,876 to 23,510. The overall, their overall budget will be 3.8, you know, million dollars, and the overall impact is it's a 634 dollar per student increase in tuition. So, but that gets um, that gets them that dean of students who's also doing the curriculum work with them, um, and who is also the adult ed coordinator to try to get the adult debt up and running the way that it should. And so that was a really good choice in the board. So again, if you vote to approve the consent agenda, you will be approving this as well. Um, it's almost it. You already did Raven, so yeah. you can yes. talk about it again if you want, but it's done. So questions on any of that? My job, if, if you vote the consent agenda in, um, is that now that we've got 
most of the data is to put it together into a better presentation and over the course between now and voting time is to have the meetings at each of the three towns and, and sell it. Um, this is also the basis for my annual report write-up, is explaining this to the, the, the town and also describing for the town what's in the warning. You know, if you vote on Article 1, this is what it means if you vote on Article 2, so it's really explicit. So. And let's all pay special attention to the dates of those budget presentations in at least our own towns so that we can be there to... Mm -hmm. uh, visually support what's going on because we're going to vote for it um, and also to cheat on getting answers to questions. <laughs> yeah, and I'll, late answers. <laughs> hopefully I'll have a little bit more insight especially into how they calculated that reset of that, that tier yeah. one. Yeah, yeah that, that one's been kind of quirky. Um, online, any questions or comments? Good? Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, where are we? I can't see anything with that. Um, okay. Monitoring board. God, are we two hours behind? Um, board governance policy 4.5 and 4.6. Uh, they're in here. They are um, uh, uh, conflict of interest and code of conduct, or is that the no. same one? Code no, of conduct that's, that's and committees. committees right. yeah. um, well, let's start with the holdover, the code of conduct. Ethical, business-like, and lawful conduct. Appropriate decorum. Always. Always. I think we have that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, loyalty to ownership. Mm -hmm. Unconflicted mm -hmm. by loyalties to staff. Mm -hmm. Personal interests as parents or guardians. Personally, I say most of the time, but I do struggle with that a lot. Um, as a parent, it's hard. Mm -hmm. uh, I also just want to see, you know, the conflict of interest. This is an interesting one, and I think it's especially interest, interesting in such a small mm -hmm. community. Yeah. Um, I mean, let's be real. It's next to impossible to be unbiased people sitting here, right, um, in, in, during meetings and then also out and about in our, in our real life. So I just want to acknowledge that it's hard, but Every time I say to someone as they're paying for their food, well, I'm really trying to keep my life separate. I'm not really going to talk about that right now. Um, <laughs> it gets easier, right, every time you say it. But it's important to keep trying. I think it's also important when people come to you, as they've come to me and said, this makes me so upset, and just vent about whatever, whether it's someone we're related to or someone we, we just know. If we know the complaint procedure and say, if you feel you have a valid complaint, this is the procedure and you have to follow it, like that's, that's that. I mean, we do live in a small town. Yeah. We have friends, we have family, and we're going to hear it. So that's one of it is, and it makes it that much more important that we, and I'm a work in progress here, but really understand our policies. Right. Especially <laughs> the complaint procedure, but uh, yeah. in order to have conversations, you know, operational decisions, stuff like that, it's, homework is important. Uh, not take any action which is intended to give the impression that he or she would represent special interests. Let me ask this, because this was an interesting conversation that just got started, but <clears throat> it's late. Is there anywhere in this uh, policy, the self, self monitoring, that, that someone has a real concern about? 
or someone thinks, wow, that's an area we really need to focus on, improve. It all needs to be focused on. In what space did you declare the nature and extent of your conflict of interest? In what, in what form? Does it have to be at a board meeting? That's a good question, right? It says to be recorded in board minutes. Yeah. yeah. It has to be on record. Um, I think we're doing a pretty good job. I think it's just a matter of us, you know, as you say, staying current, revisiting policies. Um, I think encouraging each other to, to speak up or to question, you know, um, which that's always a little bit, uh, uncomfortable sometimes, like, hey, wait a minute, <laughs> aren't you related to so-and-so? Right. Or, you know, are you sure you should be <laughs> listening in on this or weighing in on this? Because um, we all know each other fairly well, although I didn't know you were so, But until you told me. abstain from voting or participating in the discussion. So, just for my own clarification, if a discussion is in public session and someone has a conflict of interest, they simply cannot participate in the discussion nor the vote. Correct? Right, they but they can be present yeah. if it's in public session. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Just to clarify. Okay. Obviously, these policies, living documents, alive and well, we always have to adhere. <laughs> Let's keep ourselves in check. As Anne said, it's hard, but who else is going to do it, Katya? Keep us in check. Um, thank you. Thank you for turning on your mic for the giggle. I appreciate that. Sorry. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Um, Board committee principles. This is a board that, this is my, I guess, second iteration of board? Yeah, because this is my second term. Boy, this iteration really likes committees. We are a subcommittee party. Um, but it's very important that we know what role those committees play, what rights they have, or authority they have, excuse me. Um, Uh, wow. people want, I'm not going to read through these things. I trust that people are doing the homework. Um, is there anywhere that someone feels, I, I hate to skip to the bad, but. Well, but that's what we're sort of we looking need, at. Is exactly. where, where do we need, where do we need oh. improvement? Committees will be used sparingly and ordinarily <laughs> in an ad hoc capacity. Can yeah. we eliminate uh, that piece? We do have some standing committees right now, but I do think we're doing better about making those open to the public and notifying them. And we're certainly doing better about that. Following open meeting law, which is always a good thing. Why is why is number five a part of our policy? Mm -hmm. It's awfully vague, seeing as sparingly is such a you know it could mean one, it could mean twenty seven, depending on. Well, it, it, how many people are on the board? It's really difficult to accomplish some of the more detailed work in, a, in this setting. Mm -hmm. Editing so, an annual report? Yeah. <laughs> For example. <laughs> right. So why should we have a statement that says we want to use them sparingly and, and only in an ad, and well, ordinarily in an ad hoc capacity, when we have actually heard from consultants and, and advisors that we should have a standing budget committee, a, stand, a, a standing budget subcommittee, like we should have standing subcommittees. So why is this in here? Does anybody know the history of that piece of our policy? Well, or does I, anyone want to defend it being in there? Sure, yeah. 
um, because we're supposed to work as a board as a whole. And so I think sparingly just means you don't, you use a committee to get something done and then you disband it. So it's not that you can't use them, but you use it, you get the job done, and then, you, and then it goes on. And something else comes up, you create a committee, you give it a charge, you make sure it's clear, and then it's over with. Um, because otherwise, the whole board can sometimes, and we don't have a huge board, but the board can become, you can end up having experts or people that you just sort of solely rely on and you the whole board isn't fully informed. That, because I, I was on the board way back when we were going through these, that was the intent behind it because otherwise we were getting one of the, one of the, um, or the reason for it was just that then people are checking out because oh, uh, area, not, yeah. not my committee, it's not my area, so kind of not really. We don't empower our subcommittees to take any action without the without the board. Like, historically, we have not. So nobody can really check out because they have to then listen to the report and make a decision on their own about what the next thing. Who was it that we had recently that was like, you should, you know, most boards have a regular budget committee and a regular. And I reported it from a training that we, the Burlington one. That's when I brought yeah, it, and then we put it on an agenda to discuss and decided no. What I've been studied of saying sparingly is that appropriately. Because we said, you know, we're using it in an appropriate manner based on whatever, but instead of sparingly. You just said they're using some of those. Probably the only other thing I would say in this is that um, I'm trying to figure out if it like explicitly says it somewhere, but just that there's a there's a rotation of individuals. You know that that um, there's a, an expectation that board members will sit in some capacity on a committee, and mm -hmm. be that that it will always be the same board members. That there will be a rotation through, uh, not on not per committee, but like it's not the same people always on the same committee. That mm -hmm. maybe Does anyone understand that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's past mm -hmm. eight. My, my words aren't working. Mm -hmm. I, think the, uh, I don't want to be required to be on the subcommittee that I'm not particularly interested in, so I don't want to be required to <laughs> 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 not, not required, but I also, don't, I also think it's good for us to note that it shouldn't always be the same individual on Yeah. Like if there's if there's a subcommittee that pops up, there should be an expectation that that's not always the same three or four people who are who are sitting in there because then you get different perspectives and different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It also should be a shared responsibility. Sure. I mean, that's especially right. because yeah. the subcommittees that we've had in the right now are time consuming. They're a lot of work. So it should be a shared responsibility. I have a question, and since you were there, it's working. Um, th th number six, this policy applies to any group that is formed by board action, whether or not it is called a committee, and regardless of whether the group includes board members. What group would that be that this policy would apply to? That's for subcommittees? If no board members were on it. So, I'm just imagining, but, you know, say you were trying to acquire some real estate and so you charged uh, a lawyer and a real estate agent to, you know, go and negotiate on behalf of the board, possibly. I'd want a board member there. Well, that's just me. Yeah. But thank yeah. you for the example. I couldn't... And I'm making it up off the fly, so... No, and I'm not no, saying no, I'm right. <laughs> when we had you do well we charged you to do that so it wasn't really a board but I think it's saying it would fall under these guidelines for improvement and reflection right um, so we that's how I that's how I'm reading it like any any individual who's charged with this type of subcommittee 
work would be following the policies, the guidelines in this policy. Okay. Um, I think the place where we probably have gotten better and need to continue to stay committed to is making sure we're not violating any open meeting laws with yep. regard to some of the things. Yep. Put ourselves in check. And that's not just about warning, that's also about minutes. Minutes, agendas. Who's, who's attending. That's partly why I want it to be sparingly, because it's a <laughs> I don't, but I, I see, you know, like our annual report. But to me, that that's like one of those committees where we're a committee for a minute. A minute, you know, or 15 minutes with Ben. Ben goes off and does that. And then right, but I think on the other end is something like the Ownership Linkage Committee, mm -hmm. which pretty much should always be in existence, because mm -hmm. that's always, and it, it's got to be a, yeah. a mm -hmm. um, well, I guess not in every iteration of the board would say that is well, the biggest priority. So here's a question. So in regard to facilities and this new school conversation, um, there I was invited to a meeting this morning with um, Winberg and Bob and Wes, and I, I couldn't attend, but is that meeting supposed to be warned? Because even though we've charged them with that, Ask is that no? Because then they'd have to warn every phone call they make. To uh, yeah, I don't think yeah. No. So is yeah. me being present? That doesn't that like? Is that just gathering mm -hmm. information? Great question. Because really, are you potentially getting information that we, you would use to come back and report to the board that they might act on? I think the point of me being invited was so I'm up to date on the process. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say charge with an action to come back to the board. Um, so that's post analysis. Yeah. So I think that that there's probably a lot of ways to look at it, but that's the big one. I would would argue. You know, if the board has charged you with providing them at some point in the future, uh, you and, and uh, Sarah, mm -hmm. with you know making a recommendation, and part of that purpose of that meeting was to have a discussion to help formulate that recommendation, that would be a, a meeting yeah. that probably should be warned. But if you're just showing up for you know setting up the next meeting, or you know we're going to meet with Lindbergh at you know such and such a time, or we're going to go take a walk or something. If it's not used to gather the information for that recommendation, it's probably not. Okay, but what about in the scenario like if I were in that meeting and I said I'd like us to explore this thing? In I would say that's probably cross line. I would give give Pietro a call and and, and get his his take on it. Okay. Uh, but my understanding, which is limited, is is that if it's being used to determine a, a potential board action or recommend a board action, then that's kind of, that's a meeting. Yeah. And if you're there representing the board, which you are. Right. So I'm kind of changing my mind here. Because if you attended and asked questions as representing the board, then yeah, it has to be public. We confused so, you even more. Sorry about that. Well, so, so no, I say uh, yes. I'm just trying to make sure we can find some procedure that we can follow here. Um, you know, if we. What can I interrupt for a second? What is the chart? What, what is their charge? Because that I think will help you understand when it's a committee meeting and when you're just. Going to see what you know. What are you guys talking about? You know, or let's, just let's observing. Plan out, or, let's plan out the next three meetings. You know, that's all not meeting. Well, we've charged you with gathering information, research, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Well, and information gathering. All the board, and then the board charged. 
them to Bob and Wes to be Bob and Wes. Well, West. wait a minute. We can't be charging Bob and Wes. We gotta charge him to tell Bob and Wes to do such and such. Well, we approved the hundred and fifty thousand for the uh, analysis. Yeah, we. Which came through Lane, because remember, it's still no, Lane know, but that it was we, a, he's. It I wasn't mean, a charge. Stuff. It was an approval. Right. Yeah. Because it came as a request. Right. From the fund. And as part right. of a subcommittee. And Lane brings that to us as the operational yeah. manager of the entire district. Mm -hmm. um, but I do know a lot of folks have, um, you know, built th this type of subcommittee. A lot of boards, does that make it that's what they're supposed to be? I'm assuming so, but a lot of boards do have this sort of a, a subcommittee. Um, it would be in violation of our policies until we change them. Because you... But that subcommittee would be a worn, a worn committee. Yeah. You have to allow public to attend yeah. the and, discussion. And hear what's being talked about. But that's where I go back to the charge. The charge isn't for Sam and Sarah to come up with alternatives. The charge was. I'm just trying to sell the farm to the school district. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, oh conflict. Even though you're joking, that will come back and haunt you. Be careful. Yeah. Um, no, I think we need to. But I think we need. We've sort of, we've charged through that you, no, who gave, you, you brought the I, reserve. I brought it up and yeah. Yeah, so. So what are they doing? What are they doing? <laughs> what is the, hey, uh, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> um, but I think that's where this policy is. What, you know, to, if you're gonna have a committee what you have to be clear about what is your charge and is it in line with your policies that say that you know and we as the board sounds like you're getting more um <laughs> you know we we well and actually we as the board we aren't in charge of we're in charge of having him, directing him to protect the assets, but it's actually the different towns that will ultimately be, is that right? No, it will ultimately be the towns that, they own the buildings, this we use them, but, and we we're managing so you yep. to make sure that you take care of them for the town. The second member of this subcommittee that we're questioning, Sarah. Um, hi. Hi. So, um, one clarification on our meeting earlier. Sam, sorry you weren't there. Um, it was just kind of like on the meet and greet spec of things. Nothing would, nothing like more than informational, I guess, for clarification on that. Yeah. Place. Cool. Yeah. I was more sense. asking hypothetical questions. Okay. Um, and uh, yes, Sam, I would like to at some point touch base on some information that was received. And um, another, on another note, Chelsea and I, um, and Anne, this was discussed in another subcommittee meeting we had this week. Um, if you recall, we discussed possibly revamping the subcommittees and seeing about maybe um, looking at what it would be like to consolidate some committees and really talk about what the job of each subcommittee entails and seeing if you could consolidate it with another subcommittee. Because it just seems like there are a lot in on this board and maybe we could um, revamp that when we get 
these new board members? So, did, does this come out of maybe thinking that the annual report committee actually that should have been charged to the ownership linkage committee and been a part of that committee because that's where actually the confusion with them came up? Well, no, but now that you mention it, like that's a very good example. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and Sarah, when we were discussing that, I was not sure how that would look, just because I felt like the four committees that we have are super specific, and I think at least having an outline of what each committee is doing and responsible for for the year would be helpful for each subcommittee. But since they're so newly formed, I think that's still kind of a work in progress. But I mean, there is for sure the possibility of combining things if there are similarities like like that. Yeah. Because we know things that are going to come up, like the yeah, report, yeah. like the, the we want to do these letters to the community. Right. So like if something next year when the annual report comes up, we can say, oh, well maybe this committee should do it because this kind of falls under that hat or negotiation. I'd like to propose that this is a great discussion bouncing out of um, one of our self-evaluations. I'd like to propose that this go on the agenda for our first meeting with new members, um, thinking about how we want to use subcommittees, um, listing the ones that we have currently that we think are still alive. Um, and can we get clarification on what the facilities subcommittee what their charge is we must have written it down in our minutes somewhere what their charge was because I'm I'm confused now on exactly what we had charged them like what are they I mean yeah. we've got a facilities person we have Lane or facilities people do they I mean maybe yes, what maybe what they we want is just is it to have citizen input? I, I don't know. But anyway, I just wonder at some point, since we're talking agenda, because I'm a little confused now, even though I've probably voted for it, but I'm like, what exactly is their charge? And it doesn't sound like you really have a real clear well, it, view of what the, your charge the, is. The charge initially was <clears throat> to get the ball rolling and have Wayne ask for the appropriation to do the, to, to the study, do the analysis. Now, what our role is, I, Sarah, go ahead. Um, thank you. So, I look at it as our role at this point is to report back to the board with the process of the possible uh, building of the new campus and school and what that entails because there's going to be a lot of steps in that so that is one of the jobs that I look at it as or charges if you will I wonder if that though can be covered by the quarterly facilities monitoring report that we now on the annual agenda have requested Bob and or Wes to attend and report on. I wonder, this. so <clears throat> again, I think what's important here is that Sam and Sarah, if you guys are going to meet and talk about facilities, That's a public meeting. It has to be warned. Even if, if it, it sounds like you said meet and greet, but then you also said information sharing. If it's information sharing, and I assume that you participated in the in the call because you asked good questions, that's why you're on the facilities committee, that makes it a public meeting. Um, so, I guess I would request at this point, do you have any meetings on the books 
before the facilities committee before no. the February meeting? Uh, no, unless they scheduled one this morning. I don't know. So I guess I would request that it sounds like we need to rethink what the purpose is there and mm -hmm. it, and if yeah and the charge it sounds like we're all a little either vague or unclear on it yeah so I guess I would ask that um, we let Bob and Wes continue doing their research and that this committee doesn't meet before February when we can look back at the minutes see what we meant for it to be and vote as a board on whether we think it still needs to exist now that the process has been it's kicked off yeah is what i would, would ask thoughts big disagreements Hey, we got through both of them, you guys. We're back on track with the self-evaluations. Okay. I put Katya on here for an update on the legislators uh, attending our February meeting, but I'm wrong, and that's Sam. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sorry, Katya. Reach out to all of them. Haven't heard back. Awesome. That's not unusual. <laughs> <laughs> the previous years. <clears throat> Couldn't even get a text back from my brother. But what happened at the holidays? <laughs> no, but I have reached out to all of them, and um, I'm sure we'll hear from them soon. Yeah, it's the very beginning. Yeah. Because I, I, I think Katya and I just split up. Who we we both were connecting with a couple of them. Yeah. And it it took up a few. Few rounds. Few rounds, yep. especially the first couple of weeks, they're kind of busy. I do know they're talking about open meeting law up there. <laughs> well, you have the date of that meeting, right? They so you can tell them when we want them there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, happy Valentine's Day to us all. Oh, oh. Okay. Thank you, Sam. Sorry about that, Katya. Consent agenda. We've got a bunch of minutes. Yep, someone has a question. Reel me in. What did I, what did I, I skip no, this you're time? Fine, you're fine. Okay. I do have something on this, though, and it's in light of our, our last our conversation now about committees. My only request is that if we are having committees meetings, mm -hmm. that we are just making sure that we approve. We mention them as committees and not special board meetings, because I was very, very confused about the two special board meetings that I was worried I'd get. Oh, Call uh, committee meetings. And, and, and they were committee so, meetings. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, on Monday and Tuesday. Committee meetings, not special board meetings. Thank you. Your conscience is clear. Yeah, we're worried. <laughs> um, I would like to suggest that um, we don't do this all in one shot, um, that minutes are their own vote for approval. We put those three together. That the two budgets are their own vote. This is just a proposal here, so people can do other things. Um, Management questionnaire, tuitions, copier, capacity, collaborative. Uh, I don't know if we want to do uh, the reserve fund request with the budgets. But it, whether you agree or disagree, I will entertain a motion <laughs> for any part of the consent agenda. Am I allowed to move? Yes. I'll start. Yeah. All right. I uh, would like to move that we approve minutes from the regular board meeting on 12 19 and the committee meetings on 1 8 and 1 9. 
I'll second. Seconded by Ann. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 really audibly. Awesome. Thank you online. Thank you here. Opposed? Abstentions passes unanimously. So, yep. sorry to jump, jump in here. I know I, I'm, I'm terrible here offline. Um, but I'm just, again, there's a couple things on the consent agenda that I'm not seeing in our packet, unless my consent that I'm looking at online is not complete. Like I'm not seeing, there's a handout for announced tuitions, approval of new copier lease, like at the high school capacity. Um, the Blue Raven collaborative agreement and the, op the operational reserve fund request. None of those are in our packet. Um, or at least the packet that is that we were provided prior to the meeting. They're in these packets. Yeah. I think that. Do you want me to scan it and send it? I mean, no, I just won't vote for those then if, if they're not. But I just think that. If things are going to be in our consent agenda, if they can be, be included in the pack, to the, um, you know, I think it would be helpful to have that in there so that we can review prior to the meeting too, if there's any. Yeah, the, uh, completely no, agreed. Um, we do have everything here. We do have a quorum in the room. Um, I'll stand in those votes. Okay. So then, are there any? Well, the budgets, though, we're all, we all have the budget presentation, um, and so I'm going to go ahead uh, and move that we approve the OSSD budget. I am taking out the annual warning because those do need to be updated since we got news at, what did you say, 510? Uh, so just the budget. Uh, did, do you have, a, yeah, I think you have a revised copies for them. I don't. I okay. have the ones that Robin and I did at okay. four, five, yeah. 405. The ones they did at 405 are already yeah. outdated. Outdated. Yeah. <laughs> so the OSC SSD budget, and in my motion, I am including all of the discretionary um, recommendations to include all of them. The RTCC budget and the Operational Reserve Fund Request Taxpayer Subsidy. That is my motion, those three. Do I have a second? I have a second. And second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Opposed? Abstentions? Megan and Katya. I, I just want to remind you guys you did have the information for this one. Oh, you're muted, you're muted, wait. We have, but the operational, did the operational request come in as a, as a paper form, or that's just what was Lane, what Lane presented in the meeting? Oh, I, I thought it was in the presentation. I didn't even see if there so was which, a So which piece are we talking about? That yeah. the last thing the listed in the consent agenda. Operational Is, is that form in there? Or so that one, will, that one, that one's not critical. I would say take that one off. Okay, I'd like to amend my motion. And I can explain what that is if people want to know. So that it's in your presentation. Uh, well, there's there's two pieces. So you are what was in the presentation is basically the information that's in the warning that you're voting on, right? This. Oh, but we can't vote. Yeah, so this is this uh, operational reserve fund request, and probably because a lot of the information was coming in late. This is the subsidy money that's sitting in the operational reserve fund currently mm -hmm. that needs to be applied towards next year's budget. Mm -hmm. So that can be voted on at any time. Okay. Right. So that's money that's already sitting there that's been there for a year or two waiting to be spent, but you have to approve me to be able to apply it to the budget. Right. And, and 
In right. Yeah. We did talk about that. Mm -hmm. We did talk, yes. Yep. Yep. Um, so I, I'd like to, to amend my motion to include the OSSD budget with the discretionary funds, uh, the discretionary surplus. Thank you. No, additions. Uh, oh, gotcha. Yeah. Expenses. Uh, and the RTCC budget <clears throat> as presented. Those two. Do I have a second? And again, yes. thank you. All those in favor? Audibly, visually. Uh -huh. Aye. Aye. <clears throat> we put, yes, Rachel? You did? Okay, great. Then passes unanimously. Thank you, everybody. Um, okay. The financial management questionnaire, the announced tuitions, the new copier lease, the high school choice capacity limits, and the Raven collaborative agreement. Those are all enclosed in the printed packet. I move to approve those one, two, three, four, five items. Do I have a second present in the room? I'll second again. And thank you. Further discussion? I have a question about the school choice. Paper. Yes. The 15 sending out and the 50 coming in, is that different than what it's been in the past? Same, same as last year. Yeah. Last year we had uh, students apply for all 15 spots to go out and only the one who asked for the waiver to come in. Mm -hmm. And that was the oh, right. result of the ADF, most likely, yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Abstentions? One, two, three abstentions. That's Katya, Sarah, and Megan. Uh, the motion does pass. Yay. Okay, uh, the operational uh, reserve fund request that we'll have in the packet for next week. Next. Friday. Friday. For Friday. Yep. Yeah, Great, that, thank that you. That one's one of the reserve sheets. Uh, superintendent's report, do you want to, oh, sorry. Do you want to talk about anything, right? Uh, no, what I tried to do, because uh, one of the things I think that was coming up um, in some of the questions, especially with the staff uh, here, was this idea about, you know, where we stand in terms of student-staff ratios. And so I spent a lot of time kind of going through the data um, and pulling together, you know, kind of where we stand and then putting in kind of the state requirements or the recommendations in terms of where schools should be so that people could kind of make their own assessments in terms of whether we're overstaffed or understaffed or, or there's these beautiful letters from the principals. Yeah, they usually do their annual reports in this one. So yeah. this is what they put in the annual report. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, financial report piece. Um, uh, power off in 16 seconds. Please. Thank you. Thank you is uh, we're, we are in good stead. Um, we should have spent about $11.5 so far this year. If everything was linear, we spent eight, about 8.3. So we were well in the black at this point in time. But there was nothing major when I talked with Robin today that was standing out to her. Awesome. Easy stuff. Questions on the financial report? My only question is, is Robin happy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do, she's do happy we, to come in and talk with the board. The no, board no, board. no. I just mean, like, is she because she's getting along in her career, and is she gonna stick with us, or we've we've or we've talked. Um, making sure we've got. I don't know if we should probably if we talk about it, it might be an exact. Oh yeah. Might might be appropriate. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing negative there, but just I'm happy to at least not tell you what I know. That's the person in the central office. Yeah, she's senior in the state. 
Yeah. yeah the state, the state does an excellent job. So, uh, maybe schedule an executive for February meeting. And if you want, want her there to talk with her then, you know, decide if you want, want me to invite her then. Okay. The agenda planners handle that. Um, uh, uh, action items. So, okay, I am going to email. I see that Jackie's already sent me dates and things like that. So we'll connect tomorrow morning about getting an email out to staff and central office and about Hiring committee members. Thank you. Uh, um, I can't think of the word about screening. screening. Yes, it was a screening, it is screening committee. committee. Okay. We'll talk. Okay. okay. Um, Chelsea and Anne, as soon as you can send us a yes. final copy, that yes. would be great. And then quick turnaround as soon as people can get it back to Chelsea and Anne. We will have a special meeting on Friday, 5 p.m., remote. <clears throat> to talk about that and to vote on a on the subsidy thing, so we will have patents. We'll have a letter, and we'll have. I mean, ideally, you'd have your annual annual report letter, hiring um, steering committee. I, I don't have the language right, but whatever that is, mm -hmm. sabbatical teachers that needs to be approved. It didn't make the yep. agenda it needed to be. Yep. Um, That's February first. Hopefully, is this will be yeah. corrected. The annual warning and. Reserve fund request to bolster the budget. And that's so, just the, the sheet you use, like when we right, ask for reserve funds. Cool. Uh, 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 the same. The same. Uh, uh, I can sit And that's a 5 p.m. meeting, right? I also remember yeah, to just check the meeting. I also consider the survey committee. Yeah. 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 That's the word. Okay. Into the second no, executive session, or are we pushing it to February? Oh, okay. Um, okay. What was the question? Are we going into the second executive session, or are we pushing it to February? Because I, I misunderstood when Sam said. No, 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 that, that I was just talking about. I see. Just said other. I, I thought you were making a motion. Other staff. No. No, I was not. I was merely hinting at the agenda for <laughs> <laughs> Um So at this time, I will enter, uh, uh, entertain a motion to enter executive session to discuss personnel transition. Uh, is this with everybody? There's some, because it's kind of touching on potential kind of employment stuff with me. It might be best if it's just us. Okay. I, I, yeah. All right. Uh, I will make a motion that we enter executive session with the board and Wayne. To discuss personnel. To discuss personnel. Transition. Transition. Okay. Uh, that's at 10.05. Do I have a second? Chelsea. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Unanimous. 